Getting solar panels is basically like buying a money-saving, energy-producing appliance for your home. But just like any other appliance, you've got to do a bit of research before you feel comfortable making a buying decision. So how do you know it makes sense to go solar in the first place? What are the things that really matter in the sales process to help you cut through all the marketing? And what should you expect from the installation process? Let's get into all of that. I'm Jeremy, and this is Gadgets and Grain. Now the main reason so many people are getting solar nowadays is because it makes a lot of economic sense, given the dropping costs of panels and the ever-rising costs of electricity. So how can you tell if it's worth it for you? To answer that, you want to calculate your electricity costs and usage for, say, the last 12 months. For me, the last 12 months looked like this. 14,512 kilowatt hours consumed, and that cost me $3,840. So on a monthly basis, I was consuming about 1,200 or so kilowatt hours, and it was costing me on average about $320. So for me, if I could pay less than this amount per month and generate this much power on average, solar would be a pretty good option for me, especially considering that the cost of electricity continues to go up year after year. Before we get into the whole buying process and calculating the cost of these panels themselves, let's get an understanding of how these panels can produce a savings in the first place. Before you get solar, all of your energy comes from the utility company for which you pay your bill. But when you install solar, the idea is to replace your energy source. So all of your energy comes from the panels. And sometimes you'll actually even produce excess power, which will go back to the grid. But sometimes you might need more power than your panels can produce on, say, a cloudy day or, of course, at nighttime. So sometimes you'll get more energy from your panels and the grid or vice versa. But over the course of this year, this delicate balance will play itself out. Some power from the grid, some power back to the grid, all from your panels, some from your panels or nothing at all. Now for us out in California, at the end of the year we just get one energy statement with solar panels. And either I'm going to owe a little bit of money because maybe I needed some power from the grid, and I'm, of course I'm paying for some maintenance costs, or if I've produced so much excess energy, I might actually even be getting a credit from the utility company. So now that we know the relationship between our home, the solar panels, and the utility company, we can now go shopping for a solar installer. Looking for someone on Google or Yelp can be pretty overwhelming if you're starting your search from scratch. Instead, I use Nextdoor to ask real people that live in my community about their solar experiences. Not only was I able to get a bunch of really good advice in a short period of time, but I was also able to get a short list of installers that I should check out. So I went and talked to a few of them on my own and then narrowed it down to a company called Air Sun. Pretty soon I had a detailed proposal in my inbox about the types of panels I'd get on my home and what to expect over the lifetime ownership. From there, it was time to talk to my sales rep, Austin. Austin? Hey. Hey. Thanks nice to meet you. Over. One of the first things that frames this whole discussion is budget. So, how do you pay for solar? When you're paying for solar, it usually comes down to four options. Uh, there's cash, and then there's loans, uh, and a PPA, which is a power purchase agreement, and the lease. So we gotta find the one that works best for you and the family. If you can't use the tax credits that are available, um, usually the lease or PPA is a great looking option for you. Now this will add a sense of urgency because in the United States, you actually can get a tax credit based upon the price of your system. In 2019, it's 30%, in 2020, it will go down to 26%, in 2021, it'll be 22%, and after that, for residential installations, it'll be gone. So on top of your financing options, what else do you need to consider with your solar installer? One of the things that I would consider is looking at the age of the roof. Some may need to be replaced before the 25 years is up, and others are just a few years in. Another thing I would consider is aesthetics. How does the installer plan to run the pipe or the conduit? How many different places are the panels gonna go? Are they on the front of the house? On the legal side, um, you'll want to review the paperwork and to make sure that it meets your expectations for you and the family as you discussed. And locally here in our California state, we have a three-day right to refusal. So if you feel pressured into the situation, uh, there's time to, to make amends or correction on that. You gotta like the people you work with. Uh, you're gonna probably be in a relationship for many years to come. And so there's that gut feeling that you just wanna be like, oh, I like these guys and I trust them. So I was feeling pretty good about Austin's proposal, but let's see how the numbers played out. Remember my energy requirements and how much I was paying on average for electricity? 
the system that I was getting recommended was going to provide more than enough power on average. And if I use my slower tax credit, which I pretty much consider the government's money as a down payment on this system, I would pay on average $210 a month for my loan. And that's going to save me over $1,300 in the first year of ownership. And remember, that loan payment's going to stay flat for the whole term of the loan. The cost of energy is just going to keep going up. So this made a lot of financial sense. Next, I needed to do my homework on the panels that Austin was recommending, and they come from SunPower. We'll get to specs in a minute, but one thing I did some research on was their customer service. So I put it to the test. So I gave them a call, and I wanted to see how long it would take for me to talk to a real person. Long story short, I was able to talk to someone pretty quickly, and it did better compared to some other tests I conducted with other solar manufacturers. And diving into the specs, I got 25 X22 solar panels from SunPower. They are rated as some of the most efficient on the market. I really like the 25 year warranty. I was impressed with the overall lifetime efficiency that these solar panels would maintain. And another spec I was looking at was temperature coefficient. And this is basically how quickly the panels lose efficiency as the temperature gets hotter and hotter. Based on comparisons I made out there, Sun Powers was one of the best. And that's really important for me because where I live, in the summer, it gets really hot. So after a few weeks from signing my contract, some guys were out from AirSun and ready to install my sun power panels. This was a crew of about four guys, one guy pretty much always working on the electrical panel box on the side of the house, two guys installing the panels, and one guy going through the roof to run conduit. I was able to chat with the guys for a little bit and I really appreciated their attention to detail with the ultimate goal of keeping the installation super clean. They didn't want to see any conduit sticking out of the house, they matched paint colors if they needed to knock off some stucco, and they were very attentive to any questions I had, not making any assumptions along the way. So I really appreciate all the hard work these guys put in on my roof to make these panels look as seamless as possible. So what is life like with solar? Well. So far, so good. I mean, you really have to look at the full year of ownership to get the idea of how you're getting the benefit from solar power, taking into account all the seasons and the temperatures and whatnot. But I think I've got the right system for my house. I will be saving money in the long run, and uh, I'll be sure to make a follow-up video a year from now so we can go through all those savings month by month. And speaking of numbers, my system actually comes with this app you can have on your phone to see how much energy you're producing. Um, and I can also go to the utility company because now that they know I have solar panels, they show me how much I'm producing, how much I'm taking from the grid. And I'm also, again, gonna be getting one energy statement from them a year from now and every year after that showing me how much I've produced, how much I've consumed. I do have to pay a monthly connection fee to the utility company no matter what. In the end, we'll see if I actually owe some money or if they'll give me a little credit. So we'll find out. Hey, did this video answer most of your questions about getting solar? Uh, if not, let me know in the comments below. And if you have solar on your house, maybe leave some comments below for people that are shopping around if you've got any advice. Um, and if you wanna check out any other videos from me or projects I've done, head on over to gadgetsandgrain.com. In the meantime, I'm gonna go enjoy my nice air-conditioned, solar-powered house. <laughs>